Thank you very much for uh, introducing me. Let me put the time on. Uh, and thanks to the organizers for organizing this and inviting me and giving me the opportunity to talk, everything. So I want to talk about uh, a joint work with uh, Hessel Postuma, uh, two papers which in fact appeared lately in Annals of K-Theory. And then there is a preprint uh, with uh, Hessel, uh, Yan Li Song and Shang Tang, which appeared a uh, few months ago in the archive. So uh, I realized that uh, the audience is very mixed and uh, with seems a concentration more on the analytic side. Uh, so I, I, I took some time in uh, giving some background. So this is the plan of the talk. So there is a kind of long introduction. And then I will talk about uh, primary invariants of uh, Dirac operators, and then secondary invariants of Dirac operators. Then I will state the main results. These are results due to many people, not, not only to us. Uh, so I want to start by uh, talking about a, a different point of view to the, something that everyone here has a certain uh, acquaintance with, uh, uh, namely the Fredholm index of a Dirac operator on a compact manifold. Compact. We pass to non-compact later. So uh, X is a, is a compact manifold, D is a Dirac operator. We know that uh, the operator is Fredholm and the Atiyah Singer index theory gives us a way of uh, computing this index. Okay? Now I want to give a really complicated uh, perspective to this uh, number. Okay? Uh, so the statement is that uh, there is an index class in the k-theory of the Caesar algebra of the smoothing operators. And there is a cyclic cycle of order zero, of degree zero, such that uh, the index is uh, the pairing of this index class uh, with this uh, cyclic cycle. Okay? Now, this is a very complicated way of looking at this. But the point is that it's the right point of view when you go to open manifolds. Okay? So, uh, as I said, I have the feeling that nobody, nobody, not many people here have uh, worked with K-theory or cyclic homology. So uh, I start uh, by giving some uh, definitions. Okay, so here I'm using a general fact, namely that there is a pairing between uh, the K-theory of an algebra and the cyclic homology of uh, the same algebra. Okay, so this is something like, yeah. Uh, yeah. The small end is the Fredholm index. The big end is the class. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. Thanks. So, two minutes crash course on uh, K theory. Okay. So, what are the integers? Well, the integers is well known, even uh, first year undergraduate is the Grodinter group associated to the semi-group of the natural <laughs> numbers. Okay. Well, that's, that's the way you learn about it, right? I mean, you do couples, uh, and then you put a re an equivalence relation, and so on. Okay. Now, um, let A be a unital algebra. What is K0A? So K0A is the Grodinter group of the semi-group of uh, projective, of isomorphisms classes of projective finitely generated A module. So you don't have to know this definition because of finitely generated projective module because I'm going to give it for you. A finitely generated projective A module is by definition a direct summand of a free A module of finite rank, namely direct sum of A many times. Okay? So that means very simply, since it's a direct summand, a finitely generated projective module is given by a projector, the projector on this summand. Okay? And so you can think of the K theory of A as equivalence classes of projectors in this uh, matrix algebra, the algebra over A, the matrix algebra over A. Okay? Of course, I'm simplifying a lot, but uh, this is 
the way you should think about it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if A is non-unital, then you, you work with the unitalization of the algebra. That's something I don't want to get into. So now, what is the index class? Well, the index class, now I can explain it to you. You take a parametrix, namely pseudo-differential operator of order minus one with the smoothing remainders, okay? And then, uh, first of all, let me uh, recall that there is this formula. I don't know, this formula has many names, so, so I'm not giving a name to this formula. But you can express the index in terms of the parametric, okay? Or, or powers of the parametric. Now I consider this uh, matrix, uh, which is a up to that identity element is a matrix of uh, smoothing operators. And uh, this is a projector. You use uh, the parametrics definition. And so now I define the index class, not the index number, but the index class, as the formal difference of these two projectors. So the first one is P, the other one is this E1, which is trivially a projector. Okay. So re recall that the, the vector bundle is a Z2 graded, okay, because we are in the even dimensional case. So this is the index class. Are there questions on the index class? Questions? No. no. Okay, so difference, formal differences, difference of two projectors with entries in the unitalization of the smoothing operator. I mean, this, this is called the Kant Scandalis projector, but really should be called the Milner projector because it really comes from a long exact sequence that was considered first by, by Milner, I think. Yeah. It, it's really a boundary map in K theory, but I, I, I didn't want to really get into that. Yeah. So now, second crash course in cyclic homology. Okay. So you take a fresh algebra. First of all, the Hochschild cochains are simply all continuous k plus one linear functional on A. Okay, and uh, there is a Hochschild co-differential called B usually, which is the one I'm writing, and uh, the Hochschild cohomology of this Fresh algebra is the cohomology of this complex. Full point. Okay. Now there is a subcomplex of this uh, Hochschild complex, which is the cyclic functionals, okay? So you have this condition, and you can check, it's easy, that uh, this is a subcomplex, namely uh, B sends a cyclic element into a cyclic element. And the cyclic cohomology is the, the cohomology, the homology of this, uh, of this uh, complex uh, of cyclic Hochschild cochains, okay? This is the definition. Of course, there are other approaches to cyclic cohomology. There is this double complex approach, which is more flexible, but I'm not getting into that. So now, um, of course, if I look at uh, uh, zero cycles, zero cyclic cycles, then these are just traces, right? Because you write uh, the differential B, and you understand that you're talking about traces of the algebra. So now, uh, the the pairing here between K theory and uh, a trace is simply the one I'm writing, namely, you take the trace of that projector that defines your K, your K theory class. Okay. You take the trace, I mean, you take the sum over the diagonal elements of phi of the elements on the diagonal. Okay? Now, we have a trace on the space of smoothing operators, and this is the functional analytic trace, because smoothing operators is well known are trace class, okay? And so now I can tell you that uh, the left-hand side, the pairing of that projector, which was made of smoothing operators, and this zero-degree cyclic cycle given by the trace, makes perfect sense, okay? And what is it? Well, it's the trace of the difference of the second power of uh, the remainder of the parametrics. And we know that that is the index, okay? By the, I think it's called the Calderon formula, but some other people call it the bot formula or the bot silly formula. I don't know. Okay. But that, this, the second equality is, I already referred to, and it's well known. Okay. Wonderful. So, 
I took five minutes to explain something which uh, is very complicated to explain something that everybody knows. But the reason is that when you go to non-compact situations, this is the point of view that you want to have. Okay? And now I'm going to explain this. And before I do that, uh, let me point out that that projector in K-theory does not depend on the choice of the parametric. Okay? And in particular, I can choose you know, a heat kernel related parametrics that would give me, as a reminder, the heat kernel. And this is the so-called uh, Kormoskovici projector. That's another projector. Okay. Now, a theme that uh, will come later is that, you know, this, this, you will have to show that this projector is in, is in a certain algebra. The reason is that now, when we go to the non-compact situation, uh, this, this heat kernel will grow, and you have to control how it grows, and things like that. I will get to that in a moment. Okay. Now, let me get to G proper manifolds, given that this is what I'm supposed to talk about. Uh, so, G is a connected linear real reductively group. I'm putting this definition because it works uh, uniformly in all the talk, but uh, you can relax it in some place. Okay. So, K is a maximal compact subgroup, and uh, I take a Co-compact G proper manifold of even dimension without boundary, with a G invariant Riemannian metric. Okay. So proper means that this map is proper. Okay. And uh, there is a theorem, in fact, uh, that is a uh, theorem by Abel, that tells you that any of these uh, manifolds arise in the following way, namely, there is a sub-manifold. Uh, G, G invariant, uh, sorry, K invariant, where K is the maximal subgroup, and um, call it S, and X is this cross product of G over K with S. Right? So this is Abel's theorem. It's also true when uh, G is not connected, but it's more complicated to stay. Okay. So this, of course, gives you a lot of examples of G proper manifolds, because you can take a K manifold and, and, and take this kind of product. Okay. Christian, you. This is global. This is global when G is connected, it's global. Otherwise, you have pieces that you have to patch together. Yeah. Now, I take a G equivariant Dirac operator. Uh, let me say, by the way, that one example of uh, this situation is when you take G mod K. G mod K is uh, such an example. The quotient is a point, and so in that case, we are in this situation. In fact, everything I'm going to say, when you specialize it to G mod K, you enter in the realm of representation theory of Lie groups. Uh, something that I know very little about, uh, but uh, uh, there are many applications of what I'm going to say to that area of mathematics. Yes? Co-compact, X is co-compact, mean, meaning that the quotient uh, by the action of G is compact. Okay, yeah, co-compact, yeah. So now, I want to define the index class, and now I'm, I'm getting my reward for investing three minutes about that strange definition of uh, numeric Fredholm index, because there is a pseudo-differential calculus of G-invariant uh, pseudo-differential operators of G-compat support. Of G-compat support means the following. You look at the Schwarz kernel of your operator, and you look at its projection into, uh, you, you mod out by only one, uh, uh, by the diagonal action of G on X cross X, okay? You want that to be compact. That's, that's the definition. So I don't know who developed this. I mean, uh, maybe Postuma Shang, uh, Postuma Flam Shang, but probably it's uh, Shubin. I would say it's really Shubin that did it with uh, Melatze. I don't know if you, if you agree on I mean. it. Uh, but anyway, it's not difficult, okay? This, this is uh, something you can do. And so once you have a calculus, 
you have a parametric and you have remainders. Okay. Now I do exactly what I did before, and I have uh, this index class. Okay. Now, of course, is in this uh, algebra, algebra of smoothing operators with G compact support. Okay. And um, <clears throat> there is also a C star index class because I can take the closure of these operators. These operators are bounded on L2. So I can take the closure in the bounded operators of L2. I get a C star algebra. Okay. So I can simply take the same matrix P, but look at it in this larger algebra. Okay. I get what is called the C star index uh, class. Okay. So the definition is the same, exactly the same. This algebra has a name now. It's called the row algebra. It was already called the row algebra uh, a few years ago, but now that uh, John Rowe is not uh, with us anymore, I think it should be called the row algebra. And um, so very important point. Uh, people in the, in the business know this very well. This is the index class we are interested in. We are not interested in the previous one, the compactly supported index class. The reason is that this is the index class that vanishes if you have a G invariant metric of positive scalar curve. And this is the index class that vanishes, I mean, that, that is a G amount of invariant. Okay. So uh, you really have to go to sister algebras to get these results. Okay. Warning, I'm not going to write the vector bundle anymore. Okay, so there is, uh, it's there, but I'm not going to write it. Okay. Good. Question? Uh, okay. Now, what's, what's the program now? I explained before that in the compact case, I extracted a number out of the index class by taking the functional analytic trace, and that was the Fredholm index. Now, the program here is exactly the same. We want cyclic cocycles in the algebra of smoothing operators, and we want to pair them with, with this index class. And then we will get numbers, and these numbers are the higher indices. Higher if the cyclic cohomology I'm, I'm employing is of higher degree than zero. Okay, this is the program. Okay, now we have to be careful because recall that our interest is, is in the index class uh, for the Cesar algebra, not the index class of the compactly supported uh, element. But we start with those. Okay, so now, as I said, we want to extract numbers. Let me uh, put a, a useful uh, uh, notation, namely, I call the algebra of smoothing operators of G compact support in this way. So the C upstairs is uh, to recall that I'm looking at G compact support uh, supported pseudo differential operator. Now, as I already said, how do we extract numbers? We want to use this pairing. Okay. Now this pairing, let me define it now because this is now the point to define it. You always have your projector a matrix of element with entries in the algebra. And this is what you do when you have a cyclic cycle. This is the expression of the pairing. Okay. So we want cyclic cycle for that algebra, right? And uh, uh, first we do it in the compactly supported case. Now this is a very delicate but a very important point. Then what we are going to do is we are going to enlarge the space of smoothing operators of G compact support, forgetting the G compact support situation. I mean, we want to have smoothing operators which are more general, that are not compactly supported. Okay. So what we are going to do, in fact, is to find an intermediate algebra, which is uh, between the sister algebra and the very small algebra, which is uh, dense and holomorphically closed. Now, why we want to do that? The reason is that the K-theory then is the same as the one of the sister algebra. Okay. So this is a very typical step in this business, and is usually the most uh, problematic. Okay. 
I mean, there are still plenty of open problems in uh, index theory where you do everything, but then you get stuck in this last step, okay, where you cannot find this algebra, you cannot extend the deco cycle, and then you say, okay, well, I have a beautiful index theorem for compactly supported uh, classes, but I cannot get to the sister class. And that's life, okay? Now, <coughs> I will explain in a moment that there is a natural map from the cyclic cohomology of the group uh, algebra, so that's the algebra of compactly supported smooth functions on G with convolution problem, okay? To the cyclic cohomology of the smoothing operators. That's very soft, okay? So, at the beginning, I simply give you cyclic cycles for this algebra, the algebra of smooth functions of compact support with convolution problem, okay? So, one source of cyclic cycles comes from the differentiable group cohomology of G. Now, I said I want to keep you <laughs> with me, so let me give you the definition. It's very simple, you take functions over product of the group, and this is the differential that you're going to consider. Okay. So, this is truly a differential, and uh, the differentiable group cohomology of G is the cohomology of this complex. Okay. And there is a theorem, which is not completely trivial to show, that there is so-called Van Est isomorphism. This is, in fact, the invariant cohomology of G mod K, of the symmetric space. Okay. And for that, for the right-hand side, you can use invariant forms and things like that. Okay. So, so th this is, uh, plays a role in some applications. Okay. Now, let... Sorry? K is the maximum complex. Yeah. Okay, so now we start with a differentiable group cycle. And uh, so I have to tell you what is the cyclic cycle associated to this uh, group cycle. So I take my functions of compact support on G, and this is the expression that I want to consider. So, Tau phi is the cyclic cycle on the algebra of functions on G, and this is the expression that I want to consider. Okay? So C, <coughs> uh, sorry, that is not a C, it's a phi. Okay? It's cut and paste from different files. The C is a phi. Okay, <laughs> sorry. The C in the integral is a phi. Okay, so having said that the C in the integral is a phi, uh, I can state the proposition that this is a cyclic cycle for the algebra. Okay. That's a bit computation, you have to compute, but, but what you... So what we have defined, this is actually a morphism of, uh, of uh, algebras. From a differentiable group cycle, I associated a cyclic cycle, okay? So take, for example, SL2R, maximal compass subgroup is SO2, the quotient is the hyperbolic plane. Then uh, if you use Van Est, then you can show that the second group, differentiable cohomology of SL2R, uh, is one-dimensional, generated by this uh, co-cycle, the area of the geodesic uh, triangle in the upper half plane uh, computed with the Poincaré metric. Okay. That's something you have to check. And so now you get this uh, two co-cycle on SL2R is uh, this expression here. So that, that would be my phi that I wrongly called C. The area. Okay. So that's an example. And you have similar example even in R2, for example, where you use simply the Euclidean area of the triangle. 
Now, there is another source of uh, cyclic cycles. So I'm, I'm giving you the, the list of cyclic cycles you can consider. So these is, are the so-called orbital integral that were considered by Harish Chandra a long time ago. So you take the centralizer of an element, G. G semi-simple means that the adjoint of G, the adjoint representation is diagonalizable. That's mean semi-simple. Okay, and so you consider this integral, okay? And uh, well, you can show that this is a trace and so defines uh, a zero degree cyclic cycle in the algebra of functions with convolution product, okay? That's another example of uh, a cyclic cycle we want to look at, okay? Finally, there is another source of cocycles, which is a kind of generalization of the one of Arishandra. This, this has been done by Song and Tang recently. So here you have to use, uh, you have to use structure theory for Lie groups, something I don't know very well. So you take a cuspidal uh, parabolic subgroup uh, with Langlands decomposition MAN, and then from that, you cook up a generalization of the orbital integral, okay? It's a bit complicated, I'm not going to get into, okay? It will take me probably three or four minutes to explain it. So I skip it, but let's keep in mind that there is this other definition, this, this other example of cyclical cycle. Okay, now, these were the cyclic cycle for the algebra of functions on G, but now I want to pass to the smoothing operators, and this is not very difficult. Let me explain how you do it. So, for example, if I take uh, a group cycle, I can define uh, a cyclic cycle on the smoothing operators in the following way. So here, C now is correct, and it's a cutoff function for the action of G on X. Okay, so I give the definition, the line after the formula. Okay. So it, it, it has this property, it always exists. Okay. And the K are the Schwarz kernel of the, of the, of the operator, okay. of the smoothing operator. Phi is the cycle we start with. Okay. So basically a function over G cross G cross G. Okay. So this is one way to go from Cyclic cycles on the group to cyclic cycles on the smoothing operators on the manifold. Similarly, you can uh, you can consider the orbital integral, uh, the cycle associated to the orbital integral is this one. And similarly, you can do something, but it, it becomes more complicated with uh, these other cycles of Song and Tang. This plays a role, I must say, in the proof of the Atiapatodisinger index theorem, as I will state, because one technique we use a lot uh, that goes back to a paper of mine with uh, Hitoshi Moriyoshi is to employ relative uh, uh, cyclic cycles. And for relative cyclic cycles, you really have to go relative cyclic cycles on a manifold with boundary you really want these cycles. You don't want the cycles on the group. You want the cycles on the space, okay? Otherwise, there is no way you can talk about relative, okay? But I, I will not have time to talk about this, okay? So now there is uh, that very delicate point I was mentioning, namely, you are not interested in compatibly supported stuff. You want to enlarge, okay? And so, there is a, a dense holomorphically closed subalgebra of the group sister algebra. The group sister algebra is simply, again, the closure of C infinity CG under, you take uh, the operator that sends a, a, an element to the convolution with a, a fixed element that bounded, you take the closure of all that. Okay. And this is uh, the, the so-called Arishandra algebra. So this. I don't want to get into the definition, but basically you require a kind of rapid decay with respect to the action of the elements in the Lie algebra. Okay. So this is this famous intermediate, intermediate algebra okay, that I was uh, talking about.
Now, uh, one uh, uh, point, uh, which is uh, uh, this result we have with the Hessel Postuma from, I guess, 2020, is that that cyclic cycle I defined for you extends to the Irish under algebra. Okay. This is highly non trivial result, not because I proved it, but uh, I really believe it. Uh, it's the analog of the fact that on a discrete group, uh, which is Grom of hyperbolic, uh, the analogous uh, co-cycles extend. Okay. Now, people that know that result by Kohn and Moscovici, they know it has two sides. There is first a kind of, uh, you have to uh, show that uh, your group has the so-called rapid decay property. All right, uh, this group have the rapid decay property. Then <coughs> you have to show that uh, phi, the, the group co-cycle, has polynomial growth. I mean, has a, every class has a representative of polynomial growth. Okay, so this, in the case of Gromov hyperbolic group for discrete groups, was a result of Gromov, and it's non-trivial. Okay. Now here, you want the same. And we thought, well, uh, all right, uh, let's ask around. I mean, this, someone must have done it. Actually, no, it was not done. Okay. And so this, this is what took us a lot of time to figure out how to show that. So this is a thing that has nothing to do with cyclic cohomology. I mean, you take the differentiable group cohomology of a reductive group in every cohomology class. Can you find a representative of uh, polynomial growth? Okay. And I, I found out that. People do that in life, in the sense that they are more interested in bounded co-cycle. Okay. And then it becomes really very, very fine analysis if you have to show that you have a bounded co-cycle in a cohomology class. Okay. If you want just polynomial growth, it's better, but still you have to work. Okay. You have to work, and, and basically it, it boils down to show that uh, the geodesic simplices have volume of polynomial growth. Okay. And this is a Riemannian geometry problem that you have to solve. And uh, <clears throat> if G is reductive, this is true. In fact, what is true is that you have to assume that G mod K has a sectional curvature, which is uh, non-positive. So it's less or equal to zero. This is the condition that ensure you that the volume of the simplices of the geodesic simplexes uh, grow polynomially. Okay? And uh, this is the key improving this result. So, okay, sorry, I took a bit of time to explain this. Now, that uh, the other cocycle, the zero cocycle, uh, the, the so called delocalized trace extend, that was work of Arishandra. And the other one, the, this uh, generalization of uh, Song and Tang, was proved by Song and Tang. So this, this is uh, all recent. Now, <clears throat> remember that principle, namely that we don't want the compatriot support as smoothing operators. We want uh, operators that are close to the, CISAR, to the closure of that. Okay? So now we have to enlarge our space of smoothing operators. And what do we do? Well, we use the slice theorem. Okay. If you use the slice theorem, you realize that the smoothing operators is a projective tensor product between the algebra on the group and the smoothing operators on the slice with these equivariants k cross k. Okay. So k cross k, uh, for example, on, on, on the functions acts on the left with k and on the right with k prime minus one. Okay. You, you have this kind of action and the same with the pseudo differential operator. So these serve you on a, on a silver plate, uh, as we say in Italy, <laughs> uh, this definition. I mean, I enlarge simply by enlarging uh, the, left, uh, the left factor. Instead of the compatri supported functions on G, I put the Arishandra function. Okay. So these are the Arishandra smoothing operator. Okay. Now, I don't have the compact support anymore. Okay. And this you can, you can show, there's 
little proposition. This is dense and holomorphically closed in the sister algorithm. Okay. Now, as I said, that those uh, three types of cyclic cycle on G, they gave you the cyclic cycle on the smoothing operators, and it's not difficult to show now that this extends, okay, because the problem is the couple, basically. Easier. Once you know that uh, the, the, the co-cycle on the group extend, then also this extend. Okay. Wonderful. So now we have uh, our algebra. It can be shown that uh, the con uh, projector has entries in that algebra. This requires work. Okay. There are also a couple of mistakes around in the literature. Uh, because you see, when you, when you take the slice theorem, the heat kernel on the old manifold is not the product uh, of the heat kernel on G and the heat kernel on the slice. Okay? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's something more complicated than that. Unfortunately, in some papers, uh, they make this mistake, so you have to be careful. Okay? And um, so now we have this index class. It's this projector minus uh, E1. And now, I, this projector is, is the, is, is the C-star index class, okay? because the K-theory is the same. So now we have these indices. These are the higher indices of our Iraq operator. So these are primary invariants. Well, I'll get to the secondary invariants in a, in a moment. Okay, so now uh, we want to give formulas for this uh, number. Okay, there are indeed three index theorems on this. So the first one is by Pflaum, Postum, and Tang. And uh, so the formula looks like that. So define the higher index associated to a group cycle as uh, the pairing. Okay, and that's the formula. CP is just a number that depends on P, uh, 2 pi, and I, I didn't want to write it down. Okay, just a, a number. C is, uh, as usual, the cutoff function. AS is the Atiasinger integrand. And omega phi is a certain invariant differential form on it, okay, that you can write explicitly. You can write explicitly. So this theorem actually has many theorems uh, in within. Okay. For example, the con moscovici index theorem on G mod K, that was a famous paper in Annals of Mathematics of uh, Kohn and Moscovici, is a very special case of this theorem, where you take uh, phi to be the trivial cycle in G, so namely function 1, and uh, <clears throat> the manifold is G mod k. Okay? Now, even if it is very simple special case of this theorem, that theorem of Kohn Moscovici has many interesting representation theoretic consequences, which, as I said, I, I don't know very well. So I, I'm not an expert in representation theory. So I, I, I simply witness that uh, this has uh, beautiful applications. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't be able to explain them. <clears throat> so the theorem is proved using the nest sigan uh, algebraic index theorem. But there is also a a uh, more direct uh, heat kernel proof using Getzer rescaling. Uh, uh, this is not very difficult. In fact. I mean, it's not very difficult. It's, it's something that is in common knowledge. Somehow. OK. So now, uh, if you uh, take the signature operator, then this higher index is equal uh, of here. Uh, you see cut and paste of different files. Uh, uh, chi is the cutoff function, then uh, the, this higher index is equal to this integral. And uh, if you take uh, the spin Dirac operator, then you get this other integral. Okay? So we define the higher signature as this integral, and we define the higher A roof uh, genus as this integral. And now, as in the case of coverings, you can show that these are respectively, G or mod of invariance and uh, uh, zero if there is positive scalar curvature. Okay. Actually, this is what uh, 
what got uh, me and uh, Hessel started because if you want this result, you have to get to the C star in this class and uh, Postuma, Flaum uh, and uh, Tang had only the theorem for the compatibly supported algebra and that was not good enough for this result. Okay. So in fact, our, our paper is uh, entitled uh, Higher Genera on G Proper Many. Now, let me, call, let me get to the delocalized uh, cyclical cycles. So, interrupt me whenever you want, I mean, of, uh, if you have questions. Or, so remember, now we had this pairing with this uh, delocalized trace, and uh, Hox and Wang approved uh, this formula. So here, uh, this is the so-called Atia Siegel uh, form. So it's a form on the fixed point sets of, uh, of, the, of the action. And CG is a cutoff function of, on the fixed point set. Okay. Again, here you have to use uh, Getzer rescaling uh, and all that. Okay. But uh, actually, in our paper with the Song and Tang and uh, Postuma, we give a very detailed proof of this result. And uh, now you, you might think that uh, the story is the same for this other higher delocalized co-cycle. No, it's an open problem to give a direct proof uh, of uh, that index theorem because the heat kernel asymptotic at t equals zero, we don't know how to do it. Uh, they don't know how to do it. We thought about it, we, we, we gave up. But what uh, they did was to reduce the problem to the previous examples for a quotient manifold. So the manifold where you quotient by part of the Langland decomposition of the parabolic group. Okay. So basically, once you show that that index is uh, the previous index for this, uh, for this um, manifold of smaller dimension, then you're done. Okay, but this is non-trivial. Huh? So now, here are the questions for the last... I have 50 minutes, something like that? Yeah. Yeah. So I have like something like seven minutes, at least on my chronometer. Uh, so what happens if we go to manifolds with boundary? Okay. Is there an APS index theorem? Can we define higher row numbers? Uh, are these row numbers uh, interesting? Okay. So these are all questions that in the case of Galois coverings, so free actions of uh, discrete groups, have all positive uh, uh, answers. Okay. So this is work of many, 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 many people. Okay. Uh, I gave contribution with Eric Lechtam, with uh, Thomas and Vito Zenobi, who are here. And actually, there are many interesting applications in that case okay. to moduli space of metrics, opposite scalar curvature, surgery theory, and so on. Okay. Now, here uh, I have to be, I have to be you know, honest. I have some doubts. That, I mean, I'm not sure whether this is the row invariants are so interesting in this context. I have to see. But, you know, now in any case, it's always interesting to have an index theorem, in my opinion. So let's see if there is an index theorem. And the answer is yes. If you take the, the group cycles, then there is an APS index theorem. This is a result by myself and Postuma. So for, for the delocalized trace, uh, this was proved by uh, Hox, Wang, and Wang uh, recently. But they have to assume that uh, G over the centralizer is compact. Okay. Later, we gave uh, a new proof of this fact using this relative K theory and relative cyclic cohomology techniques. We don't have to assume that. And our proof also takes care of these uh, higher cycles of Song and Tang. Okay. And, um, so all these papers are on archive okay, or, or published. Now, the crucial technique we use is, the inter, is 
the B calculus, okay, and the interplay between uh, the, the K theory of an algebra of operators, uh, which is very well behaved, these are called the residual operators in the B calculus, and uh, the operators are just on, 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 on the B manifold associated to a manifold with one. Okay. This interplay is very, is very nice, in my opinion, a very nice way of encoding uh, the famous uh, B trace formula of uh, Richard uh, and so on, but there is some work to be done. And the, as usual, the hardest work is to extend uh, these relative cocycles to the bigger algebra. Okay. This, is very, this is highly non trivial. But can be done. So let me maybe give a, uh, the precise statement. So Y0 is a co compact G proper manifold with boundary. Everything is product type near the boundary. And uh, we have a boundary operator, and we take uh, the manifold with cylindrical ends associated to this uh, manifold. Okay. Now, if the operator on the boundary is L2 invertible, then if you use uh, techniques from course uh, theory of, of John Rowe, you can immediately show using finite propagation speed uh, techniques that you have an index class in this, uh, in this row algebra. So this is the row algebra of operators which are supported near the compact part. Okay. But as usual, you, you want something more precise than that. Huh? So the goal is always the same. You want to define uh, higher numbers out of this index class, and you want to compute them. Okay? And uh, so this is what happens. There is a dense holomorphically closed subalgebra, and you have a representative of the index class in this uh, subalgebra. So this is a smooth representative of the C star index class. The cyclic cycles are well defined and they are cocycles in this algebra. And so by pairing, we get the usual three numbers. So now these are APS numbers, okay? They are Atiepa Dottisinger numbers. And uh, the formula then you can give, and it's the usual formula, namely local part as in the closed case, and then there is a neta part uh, that you want to understand what it is, right? I don't talk about this one. I talk about this other one because this is much more connected with what people know in the audience. So here is the theorem. Okay, so you have the delocalized data invariant, as usual, where there you take the delocalized trace on the boundary. And uh, the theorem is precisely this one. Okay. Now this theorem is, is, is not so simple to, to prove. Okay. There are many things you have to take care of. And uh, because the, uh, the group is non-compact and, and so on. Now, important point, in the previous slides, uh, you see the eta invariant is proved to be convergent for a boundary operator, but uh, you... Sorry? Yeah, 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 thanks. Yeah, it's always the usual problem of cut and paste. So, but you, you want that convergence in general. You don't want to assume that your operator is a boundary operator. I mean, you want to define the, 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 the delocalized data invariant in general. So this took us really a long time to prove. Okay. So namely, that this integral converge. And this is a very delicate point, because at infinity, you have to use Moscovici Stanton plus Bismuth hyperlytic stuff. And at zero, it's all a thing that where you localize and you have the fixed point set, but then you have to show that what is out goes to zero. And I mean, you have, if you want to do it really carefully, it takes time. Okay? And there are, there are proofs which um, don't satisfy me in the literature. And um, <clears throat> OK, so now in the, in, the, in the other case, you have this other theorem where basically you simply reduce the manifold. So the theorem is the same, but in a reduced manifold. And this is proved uh, by uh, re 
by doing this reduction, it takes time, but can be done. Now, I don't have time to, call about, to talk about raw numbers, but let me simply tell you that this is how you define them. Uh, the raw number of a metric of positive scalar curvature is the eta invariant uh, of uh, that, the Dirac operator. And if you don't have uh, fixed points, for example, G is a, what is called a non elliptic element, these are invariants of equivariance concordance and equivariant TS e Barbies. Okay. So this is how you define uh, in, the, in the case of, uh, of discrete groups, the delocalized that invariant, and then you have this uh, higher version. We could also define real numbers associated to an homotopy equivalence. But a lot is to be done in this direction because we don't have, uh, you know, an equivariant surgery sequence. We don't have an equivariant Stoltz sequence. Everything has to be developed in that direction. And if we don't have that, uh, uh, we don't have ways of applying this. Okay. Uh, so in that sense, I'm saying, uh, I'm, I don't know if these invariants uh, for studying uh, these problems are really useful. I mean, maybe there is too much to be done to put them in, put them to work. But I mean, maybe someone will want to work on this. Or and uh, I thank you very much. Sorry, I'm one minute late. <clears throat>